uh, in a bear market, we see we see severe consolidations, mm. and also with um, with FTX going down, uh, we will see cascading effects. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Binance CEO CZ. Changpeng Zhao, commonly known as CZ, is a Chinese Canadian business executive. Zhao is the co founder and CEO of Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by trading volume as of July 2022. CZ was born in Jiangsu, China, and moved to Canada at a young age with his family. In this interview, CZ reveals the whole FTX crash story, the background, and what impact it will have on crypto future. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Binance CEO Chainping Zhao said that the recent crash of FTX, while forcing destructive effects and unexpected changes, will bring the industry into a much better place in the long run. This incident will set us back a bit, but then the industry will become healthier. So it's actually better in the long run. Changping Zhao said in an interview with CNBC. The world's top billionaire believes that the circumstances will improve in the future, highlighting the crypto market has massive potential for growth, and this rocky scene will pass once the dust settles. Binance's leader is, on the other hand, cautious about Bitcoin's price, saying that it's unpredictable when it comes to Bitcoin's price movements. The industry will grow over the next 5 or 10 years. It's not just about the coins, it's the technology that comes out of the top, and we're early in the industry," Seize concluded. I think we've just seen well, the, another very big player going down. You know, a, couple, a few months ago, there was Luna, uh, Three Arrows. Uh, Luna was big, Three Arrows was smaller, and then with South Seas, Voyager, they're, they're even smaller, but then FTX is big. So uh, with such a big player going down, we're, I think we're seeing 30, 40 billion dollars of value that, that's the FTX valuation that was before that they raised that. Um, plus a, quite, a, quite, a number, quite a few billion dollars of uh, user funds that's, well, that's kind of gone. Um, so with this type of uh, events happening, it's devastating for the industry. Um, so um, a lot of uh, consumer confidence is shaken. Um, and I think basically we've been set back a few years. Um, now, we, we have, regulators rightfully will scrutinize this industry much, much harder, um, which is probably a good thing, to be honest. Um, I think now, before, the regulations are much more focused on KYC and AML. I've always been saying, look, you've got to focus on the exchange operations. Um, so uh, business models, proof of reserves, uh, where, the user, where, where, where the user funds. So I think we'll come into a lot more scrutiny on those fronts. But actually, that's good for the industry. Um, so um, having that setback, um, uh, right, short term is very painful for a lot of retail investors. That's on FTX, um, etc. Um, but we feel that pain. Um, but um, longer term, I think th this is a, a, another wake up call to say, hey, look, we're in a new industry. There's a lot of risks, and we need to learn how to deal with those risks and how to build a much healthier industry. Yeah. So I think the last three days is just a, a revelation of problems. The problems were there way longer, right? So like this problem wasn't created in the last three days. Um, so basically, um, we have an exchange, well, FTX uh, is misappropriating, misappropriating user funds. They were, um, they were taking user funds to do other things. Um, and um, I think the trigger uh, was like a week ago, there was a Coindesk article. Um, and then um, my team says, well, hey, CZ, we still have this, um, we still have a lot of FTT coins. Like, what? Should we sell it? Uh, sure, why not? So the next day, there was a big transaction reported by Wear Alerts uh, saying that like, 580 million US dollars worth of FTT was transferred to Binance.com. Um, and my team said, like, CZ, this is our transfer. I was like, well, really? You sure? So, yeah, he's sure. Um, and should we be, tra should, like, there was, com there was discussions in the community. And should we be transparent about it? It's like, yeah, sure, we should be transparent about it. And then he says, CZ, you should write a tweet because uh, we don't, like the in what we'll call the interns, our PR team says, we don't really know how to write this particular one. This is quite, it's quite sensitive. So I was actually just going out to meet two of my friends who actually also came to Indonesia uh, now. Um, I was on my way out to meet with them. And then, um, so I just wrote a tweet in, uh, in, in a few minutes. But I wanted to explain, like, how do we have this much, right? So we can't just have 580 million 
dollars worth of FTT all of a sudden. We got it. We didn't buy it from secondary markets. We got it as a transaction uh, of our exit, uh, equity exit out of FTX uh, um, a year and a half ago, which was publicly reported. Um, so I said that, and then I didn't know my phone will blow up like o o over the rest of the evening. So, and I also didn't know, like, no, the second day I said, look, I didn't know that was, this is the, um, I think the word we used was um, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And that's before Sam uh, SBF called me the 24 hours later. Um, I thought it was just causing a lot of waves in the, in the, in the Twitter, in the, in the community. 24 hours later, Sam calls me and says, hey, CZ, can, you, can we talk? Mm, okay. And then he says, well, he's, yeah, so um, he's, he's, he's in, I thought he was going to do an OTC deal, right? I thought, I thought he was going to ask, hey, CZ, why don't we do an OTC deal? Then we can put all the negative comments uh, out, then confidence is restored. I thought he, would, he wanted to do that. But instead, he just said, look, we, 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 uh, we have much bigger troubles. I said, look, we don't want users to be hurt, and we want, we, uh, we want to protect the users. Um, so the deal, to be honest, I, I can't comment on any specifics on the deals, but from our perspective, the deal, never, the deal did not make sense from a number of uh, fronts. From a financial perspective, it's, it's a big hole. Uh, from, use, from new users, FTX, we have very high overlap. We, they, we cover all the regions they cover, uh, and they have much less users than us. Um, from a technology or product perspective, uh, I think we have a superior product. They don't have anything that we don't have. So our original intention was to let's save the users. Um, but then the news of um, uh, misappropriating user funds and especially U.S. regulatory agencies' investigations, we're like, okay, we can't touch that anymore. As soon as I um, understood we couldn't touch it anymore, I said, let's make that announcement as quickly as possible because uh, we don't want to say a, we don't want to do a slow no. We want to if we're going to do a no, we do a quick no. Um, that's one of my principles in, in business. Um, so then this way we don't drag them, we don't drag on uh, for a long time. And then use the, we also remove any uncertainty or doubt in the community because as you can see, when we were, the deal was going on, not going, well, the deal was happening, the price was, crypto was dropping. Uh, uncertainty is actually worse than negative news. So when the news is out, everybody knew, okay, this is where we are. Um, so, so we said, look, mm, let's announce it as quickly as possible. So we announced it. Um, and then after we announced it, I've been trying to keep quiet to the extent possible. So um, I didn't appear on any TV interviews, et cetera. But this was arranged like, you know, weeks ago. Yes. So um, I still want to honor, honor that commitment. So I flew here. Um, now, yeah, we are, now here we are. So I think the number one thing we have to do is be much, much more transparent. So um, anything we can do to increase transparency, we need to, we need to do. So uh, proof of reserves. Um, proof of reserves is going to take a couple of weeks, um, mainly due to the vendor being very busy. We're like, okay, uh, let's do that. But before that, let's publish all of our code wallet addresses. They were pretty public before anyway. So we published yesterday um, six top coins, which covers actually 80, 90% of, uh, of the user funds. Um, so now people can see on one page uh, which addresses are the code wallets. Um, um, and. Um, um, anything that we can do to, to Im Im improve transparency. And I think um, uh, we also want to educate r regulators all around the world, how do you do audits on crypto exchanges? Not just KYC ML, which is important, but how do you check the code wallets? How do you do user balance reconciliations? How do you check transaction logs? Um, how, how do you do use on-chain uh, monitoring tools to do this? So um, all of these things uh, we do internally. We do real-time reconciliations uh, across multiple aspects so that we can try it. And if any, if any balance goes off, we get alerted in real time. So can, should, we, we think, should we make those kind of systems public? Um, so um, I think all of these things we need to do as an industry, which actually, in, on the long term, uh, number one is I think regulators are definitely needed. Um, I don't think our society is advanced enough to live in a to live in a world without rules. So once we have rules, uh, then that's, that's right without what regulations are. Somebody have to make some rules. So, um, but doesn't mean all the rules are good. It doesn't mean all the rules are bad. So good rules are good, bad rules are bad. Um, the, the rules need to be sensible. Uh, if the rule says, hey, uh, we're just gonna ban crypto altogether in Indonesia, that's one type of rule. That's, I think that's obviously gonna be bad. Um, if it's anything goes, um, that's also not so good uh, in general. There will be a lot of scammers, a lot of uh, guys doing, doing business in a bad way and cause a lot of damage. So we need to find the balance. So it's, it's not an easy task. So that's on the regulation side. 
Um, and then on the crypto side, with uh, people holding their own assets, be their own bank, I think eventually the technology will get there. But today, it's not easy. Today, the, technically, you can. Uh, the technology is there, but it's just not easy to use. It's not easy for an average person to say, hey, I'm going to save my private keys, have multiple copies of backs up, uh, backs up. So if I lose my computer, if I lose my uh, hard wallet, uh, hard, hardware wallet, I can restore it. Um, and uh, if my, um, and worst case is but we all die. Um, so if I'm no longer around, how does my uh, kids or in, uh, in, inherit it? Uh, most people, with the tools today, we can do it, but it's just not very easy. 99% of people don't know how to do it. I'm not very good at predicting trends. <laughs> Um, so, uh, um, if at the beginning of 2021, I would not have said uh, NFTs um, uh, or GameFi. At the beginning of 2020, I would not have said DeFi. At the beginning of 2017, I would not have said ICOs. But no, six months later, all of those things happened in yeah, each of those years. That's right. So, um, looking forward, it's very hard to predict. Um, so, we just have to wait and see. We, we, need, we need to wait to see what's, what, what's taking off and then try to help it. Um, so, for example, today, I don't know what metaverse really means. And I don't think anybody really knows it's a hard word, but nobody knows what it really looks like. But if, if a platform actually takes, in the metaverse space, actually takes off, uh, again, in users, we should support it, mm. right? So, we should, you know, we, we should help them any way we can. If they need investments, if they're launching tokens that need, needs liquidity, we should list it. Um, so, we, like, yeah, we need to identify, um, we're looking for trends, we're not predicting ones. I think today is definitely consolidation, especially given that you know, FTX just went down. So they're like the fourth or fifth largest exchange in the world. world yeah. um, so now they're gone, so now that's definitely consolidation. Um, so um, uh, in a bear market, we see, we see severe consolidations. Mm. And also with, um, with FTX going down, uh, we will see cascading effects, right? So I think BlockFi is now bankrupt again. Um, and uh, I think Voyager deal is going to be, uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, uh, FTX won the bid um, but for $1.4 billion, but I, obviously they won't have the money to pay for that. So they will probably have a second, second hit. Um, a few other projects are going to be in similar situations. Um, and I, don't th I, I think it will take a couple of weeks for most of them to come out. So, um, um, they will be, so right now, that's definitely consolidation. They are, but the technology is not going away. Right? So um, it's like, you know, the, you, the internet is not going away. Blockchain is not going away. Um, so the, the, uh, we, we will recover this from this. And there will be more. Um, in a decentralized industry, when one player fa uh, 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 goes down, it, it causes a lot of pain. But other players will come in uh, uh, very quickly and feel it. And those new players that feel it will be stronger ones. Right, so uh, there'll be more competition. So the market take care, takes care. Or the market will heal. The market will heal itself. Binance is not the only entity to endure the pressure. The collapse of a series of crypto giants has shaken the entire market to the very core. Investors have grown doubtful of the future of crypto. The event occurred just a few months after the crash of Luna and USDT, which gave the market insufficient time to recover. A handful of prominent names such as Celsius, Voyager, and Three Arrows Capital defaulted and now FTX filed for bankruptcy. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.